Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. In 1987, four childhood friends were reunited after 10 years to investigate the murder of a mentor they all shared. During this time, they unlocked the deep secrets of the past and found themselves exposed to the darkness that surrounded them. Soon it became more than a fight for justice. And instead, it became a fight against the ultimate evil. Six months later, in the winter of 1988, bonded by their knowledge of the dark unknown, they have decided to no longer be the victim. Now they seek out the deep roots of satanic corruption that hides in the shadows of society, all the while trying to mentor a new companion, seeking justice for the death of his cousin. Institutionalized is the second story arc in the Chronicles of Darkness first edition story, The Ultimate Evil, set in Bismarck, North Dakota in 1988. Join us in this tale of satanic horror with Wayne, played by Adam, Che, played by Andrew, Alex, played by Mitch, Michael, played by Slavic, and the newcomer Derek, played by Tillman. If you'd like to contact us, you can find us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM, and on Facebook and Discord at Twin Cities by Night. If you'd like to help support the podcast, you can find us on Patreon at Twin Cities by Night. We hope you enjoy. So, Derek, you and Wayne drive in your separate vehicles to the main bar. It's actually not too far from the headquarters of Dakota Investigative Services, which is also on Main Street. Now, have you ever been to the main bar, Derek? Would you say that he's ever been to the main bar? It's pretty like a hole-in-the-wall bar. Have you ever been there for any reason? Derek's pretty young still. I believe we said he was 23-ish. So I'm thinking mostly when he's been out drinking, uh, it was with his former work buddies. And I'm not sure about the locations, whether that's close by or whether that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, there, where you were working at, you were working more on University Drive, and I'm sure there's a couple bars there, hole in the wall bars there. So I'm, I mean, you might not have, you know, Bismarck at this time had probably like fifty to seventy thousand people in there, which isn't relatively large, but not every individual is going to have gone into every bar at one point or another in there, and you're not really a bar fly type, so probably wouldn't have any reason to go there. So we say probably that you haven't been in the bar before. You follow Wayne as you both. A pull on the side of the road. You see Wayne's kind of like beater Oldsmobile that he's driving that kind of has like some rusted spots, but you see it seems to be running, you know, fairly well. You park behind him. You kind of hear the slush along the of the gutters kind of roll up underneath your wheel well from your tires, that collection that never seems to solidify, but never seems to fully melt into water unless the temperatures get hotter outside. And you both get out of your vehicles and you see Wayne, you see like the sense of excitement from Wayne. Like he usually seems pretty comfortable in this environment. You can kind of see that his demeanor that he had when he was in the the office of the Dakota Investigative Services with you to now has completely done like a 180. Where in there you kind of saw this guy who looks pretty laid back with the longer hair and the mustache, seemed pretty focused, did the cork board, was taking notes, had all these ideas, seemed even very on edge at the time because he had that run in with whomever was following him. Now he gets out of his vehicle and he closes the door and he turns and looks at you. You see, he puts his hands to his mouth. He kind of like warms them up and he just puts his hands in his pockets and you see this smile like on his face, like he's excited to kind of get a break and he's waiting for you to get out of your van when you turn off the keys to your ignition. Yeah, uh, Derek makes sure to bundle up even if it's only a few yards to the entrance, but he doesn't want to get too cold just stepping outside. Yeah, and he's just hats you on the back and he's like, man... I don't think Alex is working tonight, but this is kind of where we hang out here. This is where we kind of diffuse. This is kind of where, you know, where where we like to relax and kind of wind down and forget about our day. Matter of fact, like the first time I saw these guys, like in almost like 10 fucking years was in this place. It's kind of crazy. And he kind of opens up the door, waiting for you to kind of walk in. He's being a gentleman for you to let you walk into the bar. What? He's being a gentleman, then he should go first. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, I make conversation with him, you know, like, oh, Alex works here. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he's working at night. Maybe he'll stop. I don't know. Like, and you just see him kind of like walks in behind you. And as you walk into this little hole in the wall bar, you kind of feel the warmth of the heaters inside of here, kind of like 
makes you feel a lot better than when you were just outside where you could even in that like quick 30 40 seconds you could feel the sharpness of the wind and the cold especially now that it's dark and the sun's out but you feel like once you get into this bar you kind of overwhelmed with the smell of cigarette smoke you don't smoke so it kind of hits you right away and you see there like there's this hazy cloud of it that kind of hangs in this bar you can hear bachman turner overdrive is playing right now on the jukebox and you can look to the left and right and you see that there are these booths that are along the wall that have this maroon kind of like cheap pleather and you can see in some of it uh, these booths it's tore a little bit you see like white stuffing coming out just very minutely out of some of these tears like it's been so aged and it hasn't been properly taken care of you see that the tabletops they're made of plastic but they have like that thin vinyl topping that's kind of peeling off at the corners a little bit and you see in the middle of this bar, there's like three or four circular tables that are waist high that have the higher seats that you can sit in. You see to the left when you step in an old cigarette machine where you could buy packs of cigarettes, like a vending machine. And then you see to the right, this pay phone in there. And then right next to that, you see this jukebox. Right now, there's not that many people in here. You see there's about like five or six people that are just kind of sitting in there. They're smoking or they're drinking along the booths. And you see when Wayne walks in, he goes to this circular table one of the taller circular tables. And he's like, man, this is where we usually sit here when we hang out. Go ahead, grab a seat. And you see him take off his jacket and puts it on the back of the seat. And you see this lady comes walking up and she's wearing like this, right now she's wearing these blue jeans and she has these black leather boots that the jeans are tucked into, like kind of cow girl boots. And she has this plaid shirt on, which is tucked in, has this belt buckle, like a bigger one that has silver and rhinestones on it. She has kind of black hair that's slightly curly. It's not quite perned, but it goes down to her shoulders. And she looks to be maybe in her late 20s. And she walks up and she smiles at Wayne. And Wayne was like, come here, give me a hug. And he gives her a hug. And she gives him a hug back. And then she looks at you and she's like, you're a friend of this loser right here. And she just pats him on the back like she's joking around. A uh, co-worker since today. <laughs> Oh, nice, nice. You guys are expanding, huh? She's like, hi, my name's Carla. She just rubs you on the shoulder, but not like any kind of sexual way, just kind of like a warm, <laughs> enthusiastic way. And she's like, what, you want a drink? You guys want a picture of Bud? Or, and he's like, yeah, give us a picture. Bud Light, Bud, why is it okay for you? Or are you Bud Light guy? You see Wayne look at you. I think Derek just trucks. He's like, Budweiser, we're going to do Budweiser. You see him sit down. And when he sits down on the chair and she walks off to go get the drink he lights a cigarette and he just kind of motions for you to sit across from. he's like go ahead have a seat man relax yeah i think uh, derek is again unfolding from all of his winter clothes and gear <laughs> he's thinking to himself uh god I, i'm gonna have the, that talk with mom again about my clothes reeking of, of cigarette <laughs> smoke yeah indeed so wayne takes out this piece of paper and he lays it on the table and you see it's that the name on there is the phone number and you see like melissa's written on there in the phone number and he looks at you and he's like you think i should call her i mean it might just be a voice machine but you think i should do you want to yeah i want to <laughs> all right <laughs> and i like pound the table in it. <laughs> he's like okay give me a second he like takes the paper and you see him like walks towards the payphone. He's like, I'm probably going to get her answering machine anyways. You see him walk up to the payphone. You see him put like the phone handle between his shoulder and his ear and he puts in a quarter from his pocket and he starts looking at the paper and he's like looking at the keypad. You see him standing there and he kind of just looks like blase. And then you see him sit up like he got electrocuted, like something shocked him. And you see him take the phone and then you see him put a hand on the top of the phone booth and he's just kind of leaning against it like somehow him looking more relaxed is going to sound more relaxed over the phone and you see like he's talking for a while and you see carla just drops off two glasses and the picture of budweiser and she just turns around and walks off and you see he's just sitting there and then you see him look at you and he gives you a thumbs up and he nods and, he, and then you see him nod again and he hangs up he runs over to the bar real quick and he's like motioning to Carla and you don't understand what he's saying to her or what she's saying to him. But then you see her hand him a pen. And you see him write down something real quick on that piece of paper. And he walks back and he looks at you. He's like, so I got good news and I got some bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? I guess you got the date. And what's the bad news? You're going to be here by yourself. But hey, enjoy the free picture of beer. I'm sure Mike will stop by soon. OK, if not, it's a free picture on me. But she just got home. And yeah, I mean. She sounds like she wants me to come over. So I got her address here. I just really need this right now. You know what I mean? It's been a really stressful day. All this stuff going on. I'm sure you understand. <laughs> he's saying that he's putting on the jacket. Like he's not even waiting for you to be like, hold up. Don't leave me. And he just pats you on the shoulder. He's like, here, enjoy your beer. Be safe. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, man. 
I think Derek is just a little bit overwhelmed, but also find it's, uh, finds the whole situation like fucking hilarious. He's laughing it off and like uh, cheering on Wayne, but also immediately he's like, what the fuck am I doing here now? <laughs> He's like alone at the table at the bar with a pitcher of beer by himself. <laughs> yeah, I know. And you're only 23, right? <laughs> you're not yeah. supposed to be at the stage yet. You hear, though, the music switch to Hank Williams' Country Boy Can't Survive as you're sitting sipping on this beer. And you see Carla, she goes to these other people and she checks on them. And then you see her kind of go to where Wayne was sitting. And she sits down at the chair and she's like, you mind if I have a cigarette here? I'd like to get off my feet real quick. Sure, go ahead. So I heard you work with Alex from time to time. Yeah, I work with him. Good guy. I'm actually kind of glad. And it's kind of funny that you bring up Alex and all them. These are some good guys that you're working with. I hope you know that. These guys have known each other since they were kids, real young. And they just reconnected last spring. So they've done a lot in like the last six, seven months. I'm actually pretty happy to see that they're doing good. And I just want to let you know that they're there's some good guys and you're working with some good guys there. So that in return probably means that you're a good guy. Cause I know they want to be hanging out with no shit bags. You want a cigarette? And she's kind of motions to pack to you. Uh, I'm good. So your first day, like what even got you in with these guys? Um, they approached me when they started their PI gig, Michael and I, we have like a mutual friend who also used to work for the police force. I wasn't really interested at the time, but my previous job situation completely fell apart this morning so Ugh, i hit him up again sorry to hear that fucking ragonomics since she looks at you and she's like you know i was i was really caught off guard when they told me they're opening up a pi i mean you look at them i mean fuck you know wayne obviously and i mean when i heard mike was leaving the force i was surprised and then when i hear all of a sudden that they got a business and you see them all four in here all fucking drinking and joking around and thinking that these guys are like catching cheating wives and cheating husbands and doing God knows what else is kind of funny, but I mean, they've changed a lot. Even like Alex, you know, Alex has been through some shit and he's came out on the other end and he's doing really well. And even Wayne, like when I first met Wayne last spring, he just kind of seemed like he wasn't doing anything with his life. And just now he's all motivated and he's all excited and he's running around like he's got another lease on life and they just seem so much happier. I'm really surprised, but I'm glad that you're able to get a job. I mean, it's tough. You know, I'm working fucking two jobs. I wish I didn't have to work two jobs, but I got two kids I got to take care of. What can I do? Shitty ex. I, I wasn't that good in my choice of men before. <laughs> she just kind of smiles at you. Yeah, right. I need to help out my family as well. Not kids, but my parents. Really? You take care of your parents? Well, it's more of a mutual thing, I guess. You don't live with your parents still, do you? <laughs> uh, I mean, we're a whole way apart. Oh, you live in apartments by them. That's sweet. So you take care of your parents like that? Really? I mean, you help out. You say it's mutual, but I mean, you got your own place and everything. What's the mutual about it? Your mom makes you dinner once in a while? <laughs> yeah, you got that right. <laughs> okay. Well, I just think that's a part of the reward of taking care of your parents. See, there's not that many good men like that. I think that's really commendable. I always seem to miss them whenever they swim on by and they're available. But I mean, that's great that you're doing that. That's wow. Go ahead and give me a wits and composure, please. Two successes. You notice her demeanor is different when she first started talking to you. Meaning that when she first started talking to you, you were a customer who happened to be a friend of someone. And now when she's talking to you, she seems almost impressed by what you're saying. And you could see that there is the first signs of like, like a weird interest. And when you pick that up, you get that awkward feeling that sometimes people get when they think that they're picking up someone might show interest in them. You kind of get that weird tingly feeling kind of like in the center of your chest a little bit. That's the moment you're having right now with that role where you kind of realize like her mannerisms, what she's doing right now. Like even she put her hair behind her ear for a second and kind of just like smile at the ground when she made that comment about all the good ones seem to be swimming by. And then she just goes back to smoking her cigarette. And there's this odd silence between you two for a second until you do whatever you're going to do. I think Derek's going to feel very self-conscious and drink some beer. <laughs> so there's this odd like moment where you're drinking a beer, she's just smoking a cigarette and you know, you're just like, uh-huh. And there's even this moment where she like looks at you and you look at her and then like she looks at the TV behind the bar and then she just like looks at you for a second like she's waiting for you to say something. Are you what are you thinking right now? What's going on in your head right now when you realize this moment? I think he's not really uncomfortable, but He's not sure what to talk to her about. And I think that's kind of like a mutual thing. 
she's taking a break a little bit and we're basically just talking about our mutual friends or like people we know but there's like no real connection and so Derek is probably like wondering is Michael gonna show up or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, someone, lord help me someone show up here I understand that completely and on that note we will cut back to a few hours before this where Alex you are standing in front of the school and you just got done telling Wayne that you're gonna walk home it's about like I said, 4.45, 5 o'clock right now. This conversation between Derek and Carla will say it's taking place like at 9 o'clock or 8.30. What are you going to, what do you plan to do for the rest of the afternoon or rest of the evening? Alex will walk home mulling things over in his head for a little bit, probably ruminating on one or two of the nightmares that he had recently. Along the way, he'll probably get it in his head to go to the bar, at least to grab a drink and take the edge off a bit. Are you going to have your parents pretty much take you to the bar? He's just going to walk, maybe grab a cab or take a bus if it's on the way. You can grab a cab, we'll say. We'll just kind of fast forward it till this awkward moment, you know, we'll, where basically you probably went home and sat and thought about your dreams and, you know, sat about, thought about whatever you were finding out. And we'll just kind of time jump it to where you open up the door to the main bar and you see... Carla's sitting there and she's having this conversation with this guy you recognize to be Derek is sitting there with her at that moment. Derek, you hear the bar open because you can kind of feel the wind from outside go on the back of your neck and you look and you see Alex. I'm sure you get that life preserver drowning in the ocean like, oh, thank God, as he comes walking in. And at that moment, you see Carla gets up and she looks at you she's like, well, it looks like you have company here. She's like, I'll talk to you later. And she puts out the cigarette in the ashtray and you see her go walking towards another customer. And she kind of waves to you, Alex, as you walk on by. And she's like, oh, can't take a night off, can you? Alex will wave back. No, I'm just here for a drink. Your buddy's there. He has a picture to share with you. And she just kind of smiles. And then there's a moment where she's really good at communicating with you, Alex, when there's people there to not make it seem like you know, not make it stand out. It's that weird bartender slash waitress communication that they have where they can kind of warn like, hey, the person right next to me is an asshole or, you know, watch out for this guy who's grabbing my ass or you, you know, warning that guy, that, you know, right here in front of me is a drunk, be careful. And she kind of, she says something and it kind of catches you off guard where she's like, your friend really needs to learn how to open up. And she just kind of looks at you. And the way she looks at you, it's almost like uh, the, the motherly look that moms give their sons when it's like, listen to what I'm saying right now. You can blow off whatever I've said before, but I'm using that stern look. And she looks at you and she says that. And then she just turns around and walks behind the bar. I don't know what's going on in your head then at the moment, but go ahead. Scenes on you guys. Right after she says that, Alex will be like, that's what the beer is for. And then he'll uh, walk up to the bar or actually he'll just walk behind the bar, pour himself some whiskey and then walk over to the table. Like, fuck it. I work here. Derek, how's it going? Pretty good. Here. Oh, 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 you got yourself a drink. I mean... Wayne used this glass like once, I think, but that's all right. I, I want to sip something for a little while and not a beer. You go <laughs> ahead, though. Great. I got like three pints ahead of me. Good. How are you doing? I'm all right. Just thinking on stuff. What have you got going on right now? Nothing much. Uh, Wayne kind of ditched me for some girl he saw once and talked to for like two minutes, I think. Got to scratch that itch, I suppose. And just a reminder, you know that you guys did some stuff without Alex, so maybe you can fill him in on some of the stuff you looked into talking to the boy Jason and at the airport. So Alex, did you did you like hear from Wayne? Uh, he says he was being followed in the car. No, I haven't heard from him since uh, we left the school. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right after that, he noticed someone was pursuing him. Huh. What was going on, do you know? Not really. Uh, I think Wayne, like, try to uh, confront the guy by almost causing an accident of some sort, doing some really weird stunt thing on the road. Uh, but he only got a license plate. Hmm. That's odd. Alex will take out his sketchbook and just start absentmindedly doodling while watching Derek and listening to him. Whiskey in one hand, pen in the other. Yeah, so we went to the airport because, I mean, the, the car was a rental car. And we checked the office there for the rental service. And apparently the guy already left town. Like he's from another state. You got a name though? Brian something. Hmm. Sounds kind of generic. Kind of, yeah. Might have been an alias. Yeah, and I guess now uh, Wayne is banging the office lady. <laughs> All right. I mean, 
Okay. That's neither here nor there for me. So what else we got going on? Any other leads? As I think that was planned, we went to talk to that Jason kid. Anything come of that? A little bit. So for a start, uh, like Toby and Jason are really close friends. Close friends or close friends? Oh, no. They're good friends. And I'm thinking like Toby has a hard time trusting anyone besides this Jason, maybe the old guidance counselor. All right. Uh, so um, I believe the first time Toby ran away, he like uh, hid in Jason's closet. And Jason would sneak food uh, from the kitchen to him and so on. But, you know, eventually it was found out. The disturbing part is that Toby, I guess, suggested that there was weird uh, sexual stuff happening at that school office. Of course there was. (sighs) I don't think Jason knows any details and probably Toby didn't tell him any. Did we pick up any evidence, anything physical that might date back to that? Now that you say it, we probably should have asked for that, but I don't think we did. You got a car? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's 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 go back to the school real quick. I want to try something. Right now? Yeah, fuck it. You have to drive, though. I can't. And I'll just slam the rest of his whiskey. <laughs> okay, you sure we don't even want to wait for, like, Michael? I think Where he should be showing up rather soon. Oh, he's on his way here? I think so. He just wanted to do some, like, office stuff. Alex will turn and look for Carla. You see Carla's at the bar. You notice that she's washing a glass and she's kind of looking at you two more intently than she probably normally would look. And then the moment she sees you looking at her, looking at him, you see she, like, looks down at the glass real quick and then looks back up at you like you better not say anything. There's this communication. She's just giving you a stern look. Hey, Carla! She's like, yes, Alex? When Mike gets here, tell him we're going to the school. Which school would that be, Alex? He'll know what I'm talking about. Just just, just tell him. Okay. Now, out of character, I don't think there's going to be any evidence at Hughes because he didn't go to Hughes. The school you were talking to the counselor at was just the school that the counselor is now working at. But the school he used to work at is like an hour north. Give me a wits and composure roll, both of you guys. I am clueless. Half a glass of beer and Derek can think straight. <laughs> what, one success? Okay. Yes. Um, so basically, you realize, you're like, wait a second. You're like, okay, this is a school that's an hour north in the Boons. It's a private school. They probably got security there. And they're going to have people living there. There's headmasters there. So the whole breaking in and kind of going there thing isn't going to really be a good thing. Now, I mean, if you want to go there, I'm not going to stop you from going there. You realize that the school is purposely secluded there. And also, that's another thing, too, is that you're two non-certified PIs. So basically, if you show up there and you say, I need to talk to someone, you guys have no form of identification or anything to that extent. But I'll let you guys think about that while we cut to Mike real quick. Mike, you just saw what you saw on the news right now, and you're kind of sitting there in the office. What are you doing right now? Well, probably finishing up the paperwork. I'm pretty sure Mike originally wanted to sleep in the office right now. I guess my question is, is there any reaction to seeing what you think is Chase Jeep on the television, you know, like like earlier from that day, you know, saying that it was wrecked and that yeah. like basically there have been gunshots that were fired. Yeah, I mean, they, they, I would say that's a pretty big yeah. revelation. Mike probably that. thinks that he needs a drink. He'll go or hang out. Okay. I mean, is there any emotions that he's feeling like seeing from what he saw? Yeah, the I mean, he's in shock. It's kind of hard to say what he's feeling. So he's just kind of walked to the bar to like get a drink yeah. just to like think – He's not quite ignoring what happened. He's just like, fuck, he's in shock. He needs to go get a fucking drink. And then you're going to think about how you're going to handle this shit right now. Yeah, exactly. About about seeing that. Okay. So you walk. I mean, do you put on your jacket or are you still even kind of like in shock where you just kind of walk out with what you're wearing and you walk down the two blocks to go to the bar? Yeah, I guess he'd probably go there. Just go there. Okay. You walk outside and you're, you lose sense of time for a little bit. You feel like the coldness of the wind cutting across and through your shirt. You feel your like hands are getting tingly and, and numb. You feel your cheeks and your face is getting numb. You walk into the main bar. You guys are sitting there talking about like, you know, maybe going to this school and you see you guys are having drinks. You feel the door open. You feel the wind from the door opening and it hits you. And you both look, Alex and Derek, and you see this figure standing in the doorway. And you see the figure of Michael standing there and he has no jacket on. He's just wearing this short sleeve button up shirt that he was wearing before and these jeans. If you both could give me a wits and empathy roll, please. One success. 
also one success. So you both notice when he walks in, you can just tell by the look on his face that something's not right. You put two and two together. You see that he's not wearing a jacket. Face looks all red. And it's from the weather that the face looks red. You see him like walk into the building and stops. And you see his eyes are wide open. And what would Michael do with this situation? Would he even notice that these two are in there? Or would he like head straight for the bar and get a drink? Or how would he react in this moment? I think I'm just going to roll wits plus composure roll and see if he notices them. Okay, go ahead and roll it. So yeah, I guess I got a success. So at first, he'll just go straight to Carla, and then he'll notice this too. And Oh, hey, uh, I need a drink. Carla, never mind. You see, she just kind of looks at you three, and she just kind of looks like a little confused right now. And when she looks at you, Mike, and she's like, do you need a drink, honey? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, double vodka. She like looks at you for a second, and then she just turns around, grabs the bottle, and puts a double in a glass, and then she turns around, puts it back, and she's like, this is on the house. And she's like, you need to get warmed up there, all right? Why don't you put on right. your jacket? Anyway, so Michael sort of doesn't say anything, just takes the shot, shoots it, and he's like, Chase dead. What? What? Yeah, it was on news. Like, I saw his Jeep total. You see there's a second where she, like, looks at you for a second, and then she looks at everyone in the bar, and she just screams at the top of her lung, like, everyone needs to shut the fuck up. And she's like, Alex, unplug the jukebox. And she turns around the TV. And you see she pulls this, like, little step stool that she has for the TV, and she kind of, like, steps on it. You see she turns the knob, and she turns it to, like, the local Channel 5, and she turns it up. And do you unplug the jukebox, Alex, when she, like, tells you to do that? Oh, yeah. All right. So you hear Alex is, like, pulls it in the middle of the song. It goes down. You hear the TV kind of cuts through. And you see on the TV they're still talking about because this is kind of like a big ordeal. And you see, like, so what exactly set this off, Bob? And you see, like, there's a guy, and it looked like it was recorded earlier in the day, like, probably, like, around 3.30 or 4. And you see this guy with, like, this silver microphone. He has, like, a mustache. And he has thick black hair. And he's like... Well, it looks like what happened here, Craig, is that there was a high-speed chase between two people in a vehicle. Uh, looks like shots were fired somehow, and the Jeep here that you see behind me that's flipped over was the recipient of the shot. The driver is uh, listed in critical condition right now at Med Center 1, but they still don't have any leads on the person who was chasing the, this individual. Uh, the police are asking if you do have any information that you please call the local Bismarck PD and you give any kind of tips that you may have. Uh, this is just really crazy. It's nuts. There's no anyone who's a suspect right now for what, and there's no even theories of what exactly caused this. All we have is this like short clip that you can see from this camera here earlier today. And you see like where they show like a bank camera and you see where it shows this black and white grainy video, and, you know, the, how those videos skip. You just see the white Jeep is driving through a uh, light and you see that there's this darker vehicle that is driving behind. It looks like a town car, Lincoln town car or some, and you see it kind of skip, 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 skips. And you see, but they go through the light and you see there's actually someone who's like trying to walk across the street and has to stop when they almost get hit by the black vehicle behind it. And then you see it cuts back to the guys like, yeah. So again, if anyone has any information, please call 1-518-555. Five 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 with any information that you can have, and then you just see her like turn around. She turns down the TV and she just looks. And this is odd silence that's in the bar right now because usually there's music or there's background noise. You just see these five regulars who are like sitting at random booths are just kind of like their eyes are all kind of wide. They just all have this weird look and they look at each other like, "What's the big deal about this?" And then you see her go and she's like, "Alex, go plug it back in, please, if you will." And she just turns and looks at you. She's like, "Go sit with your friends." I don't know. They said he's in critical condition, but he's not dead at least. So do you need me to do anything? Do you need me to call anyone for you, Michael? Are you okay? Alex will plug the jukebox back in. Uh, I don't know. Uh, thanks, Carla, but it's something me, Alex, and Derek will have to deal with. Okay, you go be with your friends, okay? So anyway, kind of don't think that was a coincidence. Now it's you three are sitting. You see Mike walk up and he's sitting with you guys at the table. Now let's get going to the hospital, I guess. Yes, uh, it's going to be swarming with cops right now. Good, you'll know them all. They'll let us through. Oh, uh, sure, we can try. Let's go. You up for a little extra work, Derek? I think Derek was kind of like speechless. He's met Shay twice. I mean, he's grateful for him like stepping in and saying, hey, this, this guy is going to do great at our PI company, but he really doesn't know him. I think he's not really sure how to react, but he's standing up getting his coat back on. Are you all going to go in his van, I take it? 
Because I guess you're the only one with a vehicle there. Yeah, it's like. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know about Michael, but Derek would like nudge Alex. You, you can come with me and like jingle his keys. Works for me. Sure. Let me just get my jacket first. You said that you're going to have Michael drive or were you going to drive? It's my van. You guys all step out of the main and you get into Derek's van. Who's going to sh sit shotgun in the van? before you guys roll up to the office so Mike can get his jacket. We'll just say that Alex sits shotgun and Mike sits right, in the sure. back, just kind of sure. like in a shocked date. You guys drive into to the front of the Dakota Investigative Services. One of you, I assume, would go get Michael's jacket and bring it out to him, uh, lock up the office, and you get back into the van and you take off to go towards Med Center 1. Med Center 1 is actually two hospitals that are on University Drive. On the left, there's Med Center One, and on the right, there's St. Mary's Hospital. Both are just kind of very good hospitals, but one the Catholics kind of prefer to the other. St. Mary's is kind of like the one that a lot of the Catholic population goes to, but they're both very great hospitals. Med Center One is just happens to be in the news report. They said that he was in critical condition at Med Center One. So you guys drive up to Med Center One when you're going north, the direction you guys will be going, it is on the left there. When you drive up, Do you guys go towards the front entrance or do you guys go towards the emergency room entrance where people will go for emergencies? I'll let the driver decide. Is there like different parking lots or is it more about taking a different kind of entrance? It's more so emergency lane entrances and parking is usually for people who have emergencies or people who are with people who have emergencies. Like if you were taking one of these two guys and they needed stitches or they had some kind of unforeseen circumstance happen, you would take them there. If you most likely would probably go to the front of the hospital because seeing that they said this happened around three or four in the afternoon and it's around like 9.30 or 10 right now. So it's been like five, six hours. So I would think probably just parking in the regular parking, go towards the front to the welcome desk and trying to find out where he's at. And if you could speak to him and that kind of information would probably be the best bet to go. I think Derek would ask Michael and Alex, what do you guys prefer? Front entrance, emergency? Whichever okay. one's less mobbed. Uh, sure. Probably the front entrance right now. At least as far as you guys can see, there's not like a lot of cops, you know, that are in the front or in the back right now. It's not. Maybe there was when this happened like five hours ago and they brought him there, but it seems relatively calm right now. You guys park in the front. And you get out and you see that this parking lot has been plowed of snow. You see that there's these snow drifts that are kind of like along the outskirts of this parking lot. You see straight ahead of you, there's a sidewalk that goes from the parking lot. And it kind of like almost like becomes a crosswalk that goes over this road that is right in front of the entranceway for like people to drive up and drop people off if they need to. And then you see the double, the sliding glass doors the motion sensor doors of Med Center One. You even see like in these big blue letters, it says Med Center One. And then there's like a red cross symbol that's behind the Med Center One. And it's on fluorescent light. So it kind of like lights up this dark evening right now that you guys are part of this dark, cold evening. You see, it looks like from what you can tell that it's like red brick that this front entrance is made of. And you can see that there's multiple stories. So when you look up, you see like warm light And coming from these different rooms, and you can kind of see curtains, so you assume that they're rooms that patients may be staying in like that. And you can see that if you look all the way up, it looks to be like maybe 12 floors, 13 floors. And you can see red blinky lights, which you can only imagine might be like for helicopters that are landing there that are dropping people off. You guys walk across this crosswalk and you can hear your feet kind of like stepping in these puddles of like slush from the snow until you get up into this concrete little walkway that's in front of these double glass doors you see that there's like four cigarette butt stations there that you used to see back then that were like waist high where they had sand on the top and people could put out cigarettes you see that there's benches that are along the side which people probably are not sitting on during the winter because you see that there's snow drifts behind which were most likely during the spring and the summer there's like bushes or flowers or stuff like that You walk to the motion sensor double glass doors and they, they slide open and you step through and you see there's like a six feet wide, like 15 feet across little walkway or tile. And it has like this mat for you to stomp your feet and kind of get the slush off and the grind of the, the streets off of your feet. And you guys instinctually kind of are so used to doing that. You kind of just slide your feet across it to get the wetness and everything off. And then tss, the second door opens up and then you walk into this lobby of Med Center One. 
you see on the left there looks to be like uh waiting now this isn't the emergency room this is a normal area but you see there's like empty couches that are there and they're all like little magazines are kind of strewn about little like coffee tables you see that there's a tv up in the corner that's playing something you see that there's a desk that has a, it looks like a cop that's sitting there and he's like just reading a magazine and you see this large walk-up desk and you see it looks like during the day like maybe six nurses could be sitting there and you could walk up and speak to you know one of them to get information you see behind it there's another med center one sign on the wall and right below it on another desk behind them where the nurses would sit or the tenants would sit there's a rather large fish tank that has these different fish kind of swimming in it and you see there's one nurse who's sitting there you see she has like these pastel pink and shirt on and like blue nurse's pants and she kind of looks up at you she has blonde hair and it's kind of in a bun she looks to be like in her 40s as you three walk up and you see behind her and to the left there's like these double doors that people can push to go behind and there's also elevators that are on the right there for people wanting to take elevators up and she's looking up at you three and again she's not there's no sense of urgency because this isn't an emergency room at the time but she just kind of looks up and she's like can i help you three Alex will walk up to her. Oh, uh, yeah, we're looking uh, for the guy that was in that accent that's on the news. And you you see there's a moment where she kind of looks at you and she's like, well, she looks she's like, we, are you a family member? We're friends, very close friends. And also he's a cop. Well, was a cop. And she just kind of looks at Michael. I'm a private investigator and I show her my license. You see she takes the license real quick and she looks and she's like, uh, can you give me one second, please? I just have to make a phone call real quick. Sure, sure, sure. Che was an employee of mine. Okay, thank you. And she, you see she kind of turns around and walks towards the back desk where there's like a, the fish tanks at. And you see that there's like a couple phones there and she picks the phone up. And you see there's a moment where she's sitting there and she's kind of talking. And you can't quite make out what she's saying. Unless are any of you trying to hear what she's saying? Not really. Okay. She's just sitting there. She's talking. And the moment she nods her head, she hangs up. She turns around. She walks back towards you. And she looks at you. And she's like, okay, there's going to be someone here coming to talk to you real quick. And so it's one of the officers who are assigned to be sitting outside of his room. And he will go ahead and handle it from here. Is that okay? Yeah, that's sure. fine. Okay. And you see there's a moment. She's like, you can go have a seat over there. It'll be one second before he gets here. And you go sit on these couches. And you guys are sitting there for a second. And you hear, ding, not too long. The elevator slides open you see that there's this cop come walking up he has dark uh navy blue pants on he has like a yellow stripe on the side and he has like a sky blue shirt on and you see he has like that bismarck pd badge you can hear the creaking of his leather belt that he has his his weapon ass- attached to on the side and you see that there's handcuffs on there and a couple other pouches and you see he walks up and you look up at michael and you recognize this guy is ryan you know that he's a guy who kind of came on the force not too long after you came on <laughs> And there's a moment he looks at you. He has his blonde mustache that's very thick and well manicured and trimmed. And he has like kind of like a buzz cut. He's kind of slender. He looks to be about like 5'10", maybe like 160 pounds. And you know he's a good guy. He's not like an asshole. And he just kind of looks at you. He's like, hey, man. He like goes and he sits on the couch by you. He's like, are you doing okay, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Uh, Michael goes in for the uh, handshake. It's also kind of business, but you also kind of know the dudes. Yeah, you guys are both standing there shaking each other's hands, and he like pats you on the shoulder. He's like, sit down, sit down. He like pulls up a chair, and he like sits there. He doesn't even acknowledge you two right now. He's just like zoned in on Mike. I'm so sorry, buddy. He's like, this This is a guy who worked for you at, at, the, at the new yeah, business. Owners. Yeah, real shitty situation. Uh, I just heard it on the news, so I beeline straight here with coworkers. Yeah, yeah. But at first they thought it was some shit from the res or some drama. I mean, we never see shit like this around here. But then we found the ID on him. And I was like, hey, I know that that's the guy that Michael works for and everything. Holy shit. They don't know what caused this shit. They have no fucking lead at all. I mean, was your friend in some shit or what? None that I know of. Uh, Could be, who knows, Winchful Client or something like that. I mean, that's why we're here, actually. We're trying to figure this out. Hey, buddy. I, I don't know what to tell you, but he, he's not doing too good. Eh? He's, in a, he's in a coma right now. They got him on machines. I mean, they said that he's alive, but they don't know about brain activity. They just, I don't know, buddy. We're we trying to find his next of kin, and yeah. we, don't have a, we don't have any names or anything like that. There was Che's grandfather, right? Wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, Raymond, yeah. I guess I have his phone number. Yeah, you, we'll say you have his phone number and information. I'll take out my address book. You, you see, he pulls out his notepad and he kind of like writes information down. He's like, hey, they probably won't let anyone see him now, but they said in the morning, maybe. 
if you guys want to stay here overnight, you know, like I can get you some blankets and a cot yeah. and everything. And if you want to That'd stay be great. here, all right. You know, you know, what would really help us if you could uh, find some, I don't know, if, if the police find any sort of information, if you could, you know, just forward it to me somehow. Oh, well, fuck yeah. That'd be, a, uh, that'd be a real help. Yeah, of course. You know, like you're a good guy, Mike. I mean, it was a bummer you left, but I don't blame you. It seems like you're doing good fucking things here. Yeah, I am. Uh, it's actually pretty interesting, you know, uh, if you ever get bored of the blue life, uh, give me a call. Do you get to carry? I mean, hey, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. And you see, finally, like there's this like pleasantry going on between him and Mike. So he pops out of the zone. and He looks at you, Alex and Derek, and he's like, hey, Ryan. And he stands up and he like goes to shake uh, your hand, Alex and Derek, as you guys are sitting there. Sorry, I. Uh, Take it, you work with this guy. Hey, watch out. He's trouble, you know? Make sure he pays you everything, okay? <laughs> Check your fucking pay stubs, all right? Alex will shake his hand. I'm sorry about your friend. I really am. It's fucking yeah. nuts. Garbage situation. You guys are carrying and shit? Michael Potts <laughs> is like, oh, hell yeah. Okay, right. I hope you are. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. This shit doesn't happen in Bismarck. What the fuck? Yeah. This oh. is all going to shit, you know? It's all no, going to man. shit. Gotta tell you, this PI job, it makes you see people in a whole new light i thought being a cop was weird you know in a small town but pi it's really next level sometimes hey this is what we gotta do how about this you know when things calm down in a couple weeks uh, i'll have barbara make a pop roast you guys can come over for dinner we can have some drinks you can tell me some of these crazy ass stories of yours hell yeah do you settle down yet or what or do you get i don't want to talk about that shit right now listen i gotta get back there you catch some z's all right be here tomorrow right. morning. I'll make sure the guy who replaces me. I, I think it's Johnson who's replacing me. I, you remember him. I'm sure a good guy, kind of dumb, but you can see, look at him. But I, I don't think he's going to be, I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but they say he's, his brain is swelling right now. And they're not sure quite what's going on, but he's not going to be awake tomorrow. But if you want to see him, just stick around here tomorrow morning. Okay. We'll do. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. You betcha, buddy. And you see him like turn around. You see him walk to the elevator, hit the door and. He goes and hits the door of the elevator. You see the doors open up and he steps into it. Why don't you take a look through our growing catalogue of one-shot scenarios to find out about Chronicles of Darkness, Delta Green, Call of Cthulhu, 13th Age, Eclipse Phase, Rogue Trader, Slasher Flick and probably even more.